Hi, it's Christopher Dean, and Sketch has just released Cloud Inspector for Sketch for Teams. Let's go and have a look. Okay, for a while now, we've been able to do design to develop a handover with platforms like Envision, Zeppelin, more recently Abstract, which is what I use at work, and now Cloud Inspector for Sketch for Teams. And this file that we're gonna test Cloud Inspector out with it's going to be in my next tutorial and it covers smart layouts updates that handle min widths and min heights to make your symbols react a little bit better. Before we get into this, if you want to learn about Sketch for Teams, how to set it up, get your files in it and start working with them, you can have a look at this tutorial here and then come back. For now, we normally see the activity tab on the right hand side and nothing else. But what's that? Inspector Beta. Let's tap on that and see how good Sketch's inspect feature is out of the gate. I mean, it's the first iteration and I'm sure there's gonna be updates that follow that are gonna bring it up to par with abstract, which in my case is what I use every day. I'm gonna click on the inspector beta tab. Okay. First up, it's just looking at the size of the artboard. You can see that this is set up for iPhone XS. 375 times 812. Okay, if we drop down the hex value, you can see that we can change it to RGB, HSL, or more developer-centric values. Okay, let's select this heading. And if we move our mouse around, we can see that it's already figuring out where it is in relation to other objects. And that's to be expected because all of the other platforms do this. Okay, if I go over to the right, can see its X value, Y value, width and height, the text it's using, which is Montserrat bold, 24 size with a 32 line height, and it's black. It's aligned left and to the top, and we can already see that a few things are missing. We'll compare this to how abstract handles this file, and those things will become clearer, so we can let Sketch know and help them update this so it's able to be used in production. What happens if I select an icon? Okay. 16 by 16. The color of the icon is 222222. Two, 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 two. Its width is 1. Position center. What about drop shadows? Okay, we get the shadow values, the fill, the border radius, the body text can be copied here. All right, let's go to another artboard and see what it does there. Okay, let's select the image. The name is image forward slash image landscape, which is the symbol name. This is a symbol being used in this card. That text is coming up red, fantastic. This avatar image, it's just called image and the background of this button is red with its label being white, of course, and Source Sans Pro. Okay, if we go to the next artboard, which is a chat interface, and select the input field, we've got the border, the border radius, width and height, and the value of the text. Okay, let's go and compare this with how this file is handled in abstract and pinpoint the features that are missing. Okay, and looking at Cloud Inspector on the left and Abstracts Inspect on the right, the first thing we're missing is layers. So if I select an element, go into its content, I can actually select other elements as well over here. You can only select the element, switch between each one. Now, this becomes very helpful when you're dealing with symbols. So that's a symbol that's been placed on this artboard. I can dig into that and then get that icon that icon, go and grab the text, and then copy it over here. All right, if I try that here, I get direct selection to the icon. Selecting that heading itself gives me all of its CSS. And for me, this is the most important thing. I work with a design system at home and at work. And the naming of these values is very important because what we call it in design is very similar to how it's named in our React, iOS, and Android theming engines, right? So a developer knows that this is a heading 
it's the H2 heading and it's the neutral 100% tint value or N100. And from that simple line, they can call up an H2 that's N100 and start using it in their development environment, whether it's React, Xcode or Android Studio. The width and the height are there, just like they are here. But at the bottom right, there's inspect options where you can highlight change values, the measurement units can be changed, color format can be changed just like it can here. You can view the grid and your layout. Okay, jumping over to this artboard, if you wanna zoom in and out and sketch for teams, it's up the top right. In abstract, it's at the bottom right. And if we select the image and both of them, we get similar information. We've got the width and height, width and height in two different places in the CSS and here. We've got image as fill pattern, kind of similar. The name's the same. Okay, if we select that card background in both of them, we do get similar information here and here, with the difference being that the CSS is available. We also get its layer style name, which is shape surface L3. Once again, if your developer has that in their manifest as a CSS variable, they'll be able to pull that up really easily. And over at the chat UI artboard, if we select that input field again. I'm getting shape line neutral N60 for neutral 60 at 1px inside. And over here, I'm getting its color inside 1px but not getting its layer style name. And finally, if I select that chat, chat bubble left N10 smart layout symbol on both of them, I do get the name and on abstract here, it's rendering a little bit funny. I think that's because Sketch is Sketch for Teams native format. It's from the same company. So eventually they'll be able to handle everything that we need to get out of this file a lot better than any of the third party tools. And that's pretty exciting to think about, right? Okay, let's make a checklist to see what Cloud Inspector from Sketch needs to replace this completely. And that list for me, that would help me and the people I work with out is layers, CSS attributes, being able to copy them, text layer style names like this, so the devs can read them easily, downloadable assets, that's something that we didn't touch on that Abstract can do, and Cloud Inspector is gonna be able to do pretty soon grid and layout view, and lastly, multiplayer mode of some kind, where two or more designers can be working on the same file, save whatever they're doing and everything just works, or in real time like Figma, which is something that Sketch has planned. Now that doesn't look like much, but I bet you in development terms for the Sketch team, that's quite a lot, but I'm looking forward to where it goes anyway. I would love to be able to just use Sketch and Sketch for Teams, rely less on third-party tools and plugins, and yeah, just see the platform really grow this year. I'm loving what they're doing. This is a good start. There's a lot more to go, but yeah, pretty happy. And with that said, that's the end of this walkthrough. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more, subscribe. Join me in the next one for the smart layout updates. And I'll see you next time. Bye.